Good afternoon. February 28th. It's a leap year, so we got another day in February tomorrow. Welcome to my cow lick combs YouTube channel. Please mind the don't mind the wind sound. I don't have good technology. Uh, getting ready for another episode number four of Merim Hister She with Uncle Raj. It's been very mild here. It's raining today. And usually in March, our snow amount is about three feet higher than that. So, everybody's talking about the mild winter here in the Maramashi. And I'll be going into that house to uh, get ready, go down the basement and see what Raj is up to. What year are we gonna do today? Uh, hi. We are at, um, I'm down in Raj's basement again, uh, with another one of my sweaters on that my mother actually knitted. Um, this is our fourth installment of Mera Mahistorshi, and Raj is just doing some things over there. He's going to join me in a couple of minutes. And, you know, I, I've, uh, just wanted to say a couple of words, but, okay, so for those of you that are just... Uh, maybe this is your first time watching. Raj, Raj is my uncle, my dad's brother. I've been home from Vancouver for a few months now. Uh, you know, I was here, my father was sick, he had passed away, and now um, I'm uh, still here uh, doing some things. And one of those things is a lot of thinking, a lot, you know, death does that, right? But I got to thinking, Raj is a man that has um, documented decades and decades of uh, the local history here in the Miramichi and the surrounding area via mostly newspaper clippings. And it's decades. It's, it's, um, it, and so I've always um, respected the fact that he's done that as a hobby, and now we're just trying to honor that uh, right now through a little YouTube channel, and it gives us a chance to connect. It's been, uh, you know, we've only done three episodes now, but I'm coming out to Raj, and it puts us in a good mood before, during, and after. So I know uh, Raj's son Josh has been watching, my nephew Ben has been watching, and even if those are the only two people, uh, that's fine with us. It gives us a chance to connect uh, further with some family members. But I do have some comments coming in from my friends. They're having a good laugh at things, and they're actually appreciating the fact of what we're trying to do here. Um, so, the Miramichi, I've, I've been uh, thinking a lot about um, things, my roots, where I come from since I've been home these past uh, three months. And, it, you know, one of the things that I've been doing is delving into the work of David Adams Richards. He's a local writer uh, that, that was born and raised here, went to high school here. My father actually graduated with him. But I've always been intrigued by him. And um, this time I've really delved into uh, uh, some of his work. For the you know, I've read a few books in the past, but since I've been on the sh uh, the river here, I've gone through five or six of his books, and I'm just a, I'm just rereading his first novel, uh, the coming, the coming of winter, and I think this was written in seventy. It was in the seventies. I can't remember exactly, but he was just a young man in his twenties, and it, it is it's really really good. It's, um, as, as are his other books, but the reason I want to talk about him is that tomorrow night, through the National Film Board of Canada, they are actually tonight as well, but tomorrow was the first date that they had uh, planned for over at our main theater complex here, the cinemas. Um, they are showing a, a feature documentary film that was directed by a local filmmaker here in close to the Miramichi. Her name is Monique Leblanc, I think, and pardon me if I get that name wrong. Um, and uh, her film, it will be shown tomorrow. I don't know if it's the premiere, I think it is, but there's been like a little bit of um, uh, showings across uh, part of Canada here. And I'm really excited to go watch it. I got tickets early for it. And, um, it, you know, it, it's it's going to be an excellent uh, thing to take in in my hometown. Uh, this was just recently, I think it's called The Geographies of Dar, David Adams Richards. Uh, and pardon me if I get that title wrong again. 
So this is a book that, this is his most recent uh, memoir, most recent uh, piece of work, I think. Notes on a Writer's Life, David Adams Richards. I read this, whatever, a month and a half ago or something. I went up and bought it at a local coffee shop here. And I'm telling you right now, it really, really, really uh, uh, got to me. It, 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 I thought it was really, really brilliant. I thought it was really deep. It gave me an insight into this uh, artist's thinking. And, you know, David Adams Richards was a guy that, you know, it, it, there's a lot of Miramichers that I've been talking to that never read a book. They, they don't, they never even heard of him. And then he's had some criticisms over the past, but these things happen all the time. Uh, when somebody does something and people are first usually to, like not usually, but meant much of the time to criticize, as opposed to taking a step back and realizing that we have a great artist here, a great writer that has spent most of, you know, he lives here as a uh, part time, I think, I'm not sure, but he respects the river immensely. He gives it a soul, he, he you know, he knows there's a soul here. He gives the, the citizens and the peoples of the Miramichi a voice. And it is really good, um, deep writing. He, he gets into the psyche of the human uh, condition and he deserves a lot of credit and I give it to him. So I look forward to going over and watching that film tomorrow and just a couple of the things that are, that are from this memoir that I wrote down. Um, you know, he, he, these are his words. Those who propose to eradicate suffering by blaming the right institutions or changing the response to it cannot live one day or even one afternoon of certainty about themselves and neither can anyone else, right? So, you know, this time, I'm just honoring a Miramichi uh, citizen here and a Miramichi um, artist, writer, and through our little history project that Raj and I are doing. Uh, what else did he write here? Goodness can best be applied to the world by an individual response to the world. You know, in other words, actions speak louder than words. Action is eloquence, et cetera, et cetera. And most of us can um, uh, do better with something like that. Okay, I see my time is coming up to a little bit longer than I had hoped. Raj is getting his things organized and we'll be with you guys very shortly. Raj was here this morning preparing um, uh, what we're going to be doing today, what we're going to be talking. We're still in the 80s, the early 80s. And um, uh, again, we're honoring some work here. We're honoring the work of somebody that has put the time and effort in to document a local history through newspaper clippings. And it's my, um, it's been a real pleasure for me to sit down with my uh, Uncle Roger in his basement and to do a creative project such as this. And he also des deserves credit for being in his mid-70s and just being so open to the idea. It was so easy. I, when I mentioned it, he's like, okay. And that was it. There's no, he just knew that he's always up for a uh, creative project and always has been. So we'll see you in a minute. Oh, I got these in order here. Okay. Well, here we go. I just pressed uh, record. Yep. And once again, after my little intro, we're here with Roger on a Wednesday, rainy Wednesday. How are you doing today? Oh, well, we're all, all prepared here for this uh, main event here. <laughs> that, uh, our episode today is uh, happened 40 years ago, plus tax. <laughs> that means uh, 41 years of an epic event that was organized on our Great River. So our last two episodes of 83 and 84 will continue with today's topic. Okay, so today's topic, so Roger, I, I'm new to this topic. I had no, I, no remembrance of this, unfortunately. And Roger has, um, will be able to uh, uh, dedicate uh, this little video just to this one event on the old Miramichi River. So one of the biggest uh, guys that played a big part in this here event is this guy here <laughs> that was in on um, the event. I can hold it up for you. So that is Brian Richards. That's Brian Richard. 
And he, he's got his piracy hat on. <laughs> oh my God, his son looks like him. So right off the bat, they're already knowing what the topic is today. And Brian was a, uh, a local guy. He worked, he did a lot of writing. Oh, and he was a runner, he was a long distance oh, runner. Oh my God, yes. And I think his son is involved in coaching soccer and I uh, remember his daughter from uh, my university days. So you're gonna uh, just read uh, these two uh, sections here. Okay. And how Brian presented this topic to us. Okay, so this whole, this is what we're, this topic, we don't know what we're coming. There's a group of guys right here. Uh, Billy Hay did a lot of refereeing. Did he ump baseball too? Oh, maybe. I don't know. This is David Cadogan? Yeah. Yeah, David Cadogan. And then Wally Jimmo, a local musician, an athlete, a teacher, and a friend to many people, including our family here. Okay, so the great Miramichi leader, are we even telling that what this is yet? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is a, so what happened on the Miramichi River in 1983 yeah. was a raft race, okay? And, you know, for those people that are older, they're gonna recognize the brilliance in such a thing in a small town, okay? Small town gets together, summer day, and a bunch of people are building rafts and they're racing down a river. like. What could possibly go wrong? But everything could go right too. And it is, that, that's, that's an exciting time. And uh, I can just visualize it. And it's gonna be difficult maybe for young people that are watching this to even probably listen for 30 seconds before they have to look at their uh, next tweet. But to the point of these things seem like a lost art form. And we're just trying to do a, a little bit of recreating. Okay, so I'm going to read the first couple of paragraphs here by Brian Richard. It had to be the biggest river party the famous Miramichi has seen in quite some time. Now that's saying something. The Miramichi leader raft race, uh, the Miramichi raft racing championship of all the world and nearby plants, uh, <laughs> drew an overwhelming response from some 200 people who took to the water and the thousands on shore who watched them. When 51 rafts left the Morrissey Bridge in Newcastle, destined for the Chatham Wharf, this great river of ours was invaded with crafts of all sizes and shapes. With every raft, we had a minimum of four people, including the 17 aboard the William P, which set the record for the most participants. For the Miramichi, this first ever event was unequaled to any type of activity seen on the river. The race captured the creative minds of hundreds who registered 62 rafts and were able to get the 51 to the starting line. And we'll stop it right there. That's exciting, folks. So, so before we start showing, try to show some of the, the rafts that were in it, we have to... We have to indicate the people that were, were productive here to making this a success. So this next paragraph, Jamie, you read this here, that played a big part right here. Okay, so Dave Cool, And his wife. I with his know. houseboat was very appreciated as this type of luxury craft helped the judges tremendously in viewing the rafts. Jean-Guy Lisette, the official race photographer and I, that's Brian Richard, Brian Richards, the, uh, the local reporter at the time, and I had a tremendous view of the rafts from the top of Cool's boat. This resulted in some very good shots of the raft race, which you will notice in these pages. I can't forget the judges. With the expert help of our two mayors and Mrs. Margaret Adams, along with the warm hospitality of Mrs. Mona Cool. The three hours we spent on the houseboat was a great way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Well, it sure sounds like it. Yep. So uh, we have a lo little bit more reading to do, but we're gonna just show how they uh, departed the Morrissey Bridge, is where all the rafts were tied up at the time. And of course, uh, the organizers of this had to make sure that the tide was going out. The tide's going out. And that, we have to, so the, the, the preparation of the day would have been uh, important. Okay, so I'll read the caption there. This says, and away they go at the start of the race. And 
Oh wow, there's see the pirate flag up at the top right here. That's cool. That was it's so it's so fun. It's just create it's creativity so in that, physical reality. So this is uh, the raft that has the most people aboard. Okay, so the William P with 17 men aboard were up to their ankles in water. So there's some good Miramichi engineering right there, folks. The boys had her all sunk in about uh, uh, 500 meters up the up the water. That would have been fun just to be a part of that, right? How many life jackets do you see? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, no life jackets because every one of these guys that were on this raft drove to the race with their kid laying on the back window of their car without a seatbelt because I remember doing that in the 80s. Okay, this is a good photo before we do our reading. Okay, here's another <coughs> photo. Caption reads, the Armada is seen here leaving Newcastle with most of the rafts enjoying the beautiful summer weather. Wow, this just looks so fun. This happened, Miramichi, New Brunswick, 1983. And for those of you that don't know, we, we have a powerful river here. We have a river that comes in from the northeast part of, the, of Canada. It's, it, it's, uh, we live on the bay and it's a massive river that is saltwater river that flows in and it, it, it gives us our identity. It's, it's a lot of our livelihoods have been uh, because of this river and we all just uh, feel it. We feel it in our soul as um, Miramichiers. Okay, we're gonna, we got more of a show here, but uh, Ryan had some of uh, little short stories here of the happenings on the river. So we're gonna we're not gonna read that. We're okay. Gonna, we're gonna start from here, and you can kind of go through that kind of quickly. They're, okay. They're really interesting. Same photo, <coughs> the boys. Um, start here, the students. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the students from Horizons Magazine put in a raft called Sam, which consisted of three inner tubes tied together with a plywood sheet on the top. About halfway out, the craft broke apart and the four bodies on board scrambled for the tubes. No life jackets. <laughs> Jeff Muzzerall found himself without a tube and swam half the way in. <laughs> but it gives us resilience. Like we're, we're, everybody's afraid of their own shadows now. We're creating people that are afraid to live. Uh, Ben's, red and white, that was the hot dog place in town. Captain by Grant Jardine was towed from Chatham and ran into problems with the raft falling apart and was late for the start. His mates met him on the river about 15 minutes after the start of the race. <laughs> <laughs> the CFB, that's the Air Force Base. Chatham Fire Department entered afloat with a monitorized pump for either propulsion or for spraying. It seemed a lot of rafts got wet and the firefighters raft didn't move that fast. Steve Heckbert, we showed a picture of Steve the other day at the slow pitch uh, championships with his shirt off. Steve Heckbert took time out from his busy softball tournament and joined the raft flotilla with his windsurfer adding to the color of the complete show. There were about 10 canoes, a few sailboats. Um, wow, this is really, really fun. This yeah. Steve Heckbert sounds like an interesting guy. Oh, God, yes. I, yeah. I never got to know that guy. Yeah. Okay, okay, you start here. Oh, Paul Dawson? Right here, yeah. Okay, Paul Dawson, Commerce and Development Minister in Miramichi, Newcastle, MLA, was on the Ply Tannic, which won a prize for the best raft in the commercial category. Oh, cool. Is that the Ply Tannic? Yeah. There's Paul Dawson, folks. He was a well-known local Miramichi guy, put, volunteered so much of, of his time over the years. I can't really go on to talk about Paul yeah, so much, but here's, here's the, uh, yeah, he was the, okay, Sonny Boy Drizdell left, and Paul Dawson, the Minister of Commerce and Development, is that New Brunswick or just yeah, Miramichi? Yeah, yeah. uh, enjoy the trip from Newcastle to Chatham aboard the Plytanic. I know Paul's son. Tommy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me see now. This oh, one. wow, Raj. Yeah. Look, look uh, again. Okay, we got to continue. Raj gotta has continue. put time into this, even yeah. this morning, to get ready for this. Yeah, that story, his story continues there. Okay. At one point in the race, race I saw Sonny Driscoll's guitar <laughs> floating down the river. <laughs> 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 Talk about a wet song, or was it that Derek uh, Birchall didn't like Sonny's singing? He must have threw his guitar over. 
Oh my God. What about the Frank, you want me to read the Frank McKenna? Oh yes. Okay, so Chatham MLA, Frank McKenna, was on the PEI raft with skipper Jim McNeil in the water more than on the raft. Apparently, Frank stepped on a nail and had to get some stitches in his foot. <laughs> One in the end, for good measure. Both MLAs were good sports to take part in our race. That's it for this year, and if you were thinking of entering next year, try to build a raft with safety in mind. That's it, there, there's no law. It was just like, just build one with safety in mind coming from a local reporter, sports. So, so she says that Frank was on the PEI. Oh, right that's there. Frank right there. Zoom in on the, the, the lead that has the raft there from PEI. Okay. Well, there, there was the former premier of New Brunswick, Frank McKenna, who, who went on to become an um, ambassador to the United States, a very sharp, sharp, organized man. And there's the skipper of the raft, a guy from PEI named uh, Jim McNeil, mm. and he's in uh, the water. <laughs> 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 oh my God, that sounds like fun. Fitting with the story, eh? Hey, Raj, I'm gonna pause her right now because oh. I want to get another drink. Okay. Uh, of tea. I'm 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 having tea. Okay. Okay, we're back. Okay. I just got a tea refill. I just added a little bit of milk in there. It's just a classic old English tea. Okay, we have a few more uh, clippings on uh, some of the rafts there. You can read that one. Okay. The name on this raft tells a story. In some cases, the loons would be a more appropriate name. <laughs> <laughs> the moose is loose. See the banter and the joking that went on and nobody was offended and we all just were having a good old time. There's a raft. Wow, look at the, you know, it's really cool. Uh, this might be a little hard. Uh... The show, but there is some excitement on on this year raft here. The Pepto Bismarck loons from the leader. Yeah, it's kind of it is kind of hard, but man, because of the background. Yeah, because of the background. But when I'm looking at this photo, it's a it, it just looks like people are having so much fun. Like it it is. That's a look at that bunch of people out on the river and our river has so many pockets to it it's a world famous salmon river ted williams used to have a camp here the greatest hitter that has ever lived ladies and gentlemen the greatest hitter that has ever lived of course that's subjective but there's a good argument for it but he did his salmon fishing up here and there's lots of places to swim we have amazing seafood okay Thousands of people jammed the Chatham Wharf to watch the finish of the great Miramichi leader raft race. August 17th, 1983, Roger Cummel, the local historian, is just knocking it out of the park with this documentation. Thousands of people at the Chatham Wharf right there lined up in 83 to see who was coming in first. And I, my goodness... What a great, what a great event. This is one of the, one of the ships that would come up the river, parked there. So when you read this caption, this Sorry, club okay. is, is getting their raft ready on the, okay. the water. <coughs> uh, okay, so here's the photo. <clears throat> um, okay, so this is a big ship. So just to put it into context, that's the little raft next to this big ship at our uh, wharf. Uh, the ferns? The furnace? Yeah, furnace. Uh, a regular visitor to the Miramichi River had an unfamiliar craft parked beside it on Thursday morning. The Roaring, the Roaring Lion Raft is being constructed on the site by the Newcastle Lions Club and will be one of the rafts in the great Miramichi leader raft race set to go Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. Wow! <coughs> Look at that cool little, that looks like a Huckleberry Finn one right yeah, there. This is the same uh, thing that's floating, and it looks like there's some lad in the river towing, swimming and towing the raft. Okay. <laughs> so that is a picture of the same raft that we just showed you, and this, it's hard to see, but yeah. that is an individual out having some fun. <coughs> Beautiful. There's a sailboat in the background there, too, if you can see it right there. You can just re read the depiction on that. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, shown above is the Newcastle Lions Club raft, <coughs> which won an award in Saturday's competition. 
Okay. So here's a better version of the guys that were involved in that raft. Okay. Here is a close-up of the people on that raft. Okay, that's the, that's one. This looks like a photo from the freaking Great Depression in 1922. A bunch of guys <laughs> sitting out there starving or something. And then there is a, look at this guy. He's got a little freaking Speedo on. Wow. And there's, is that an accordion? They're playing music, I think? No. Okay, Jim Hennessy and the Natural Resources crew. So, a bunch of dudes that work for the Natural Resources Department put together their raft. Really, really cool stuff. Okay, now we're going to show, show some awards. Okay. We'll have to read uh, this one. Okay. The, these are the rafts that won awards. Wow, that's cool. <clears throat> Look at this raft right here. The creativity. This is the best decorated raft. Again, a raft race going down our great river. The crew of the SS Homegrown <laughs> enjoys the float down the Miramichi River on Saturday during the great Miramichi leader raft race. Um, the Miramichi Raft Racing Championship of all the world and nearby planets. <laughs> uh, the Homegrown won first place for the best decorated raft in the individual category. Really, really cool. There's another awarded raft. <coughs> oh, here's another one. Oh, that's beautiful. A little sailboat uh, decor on that raft. Yeah, um, the best individual raft in the Great Miramichi, leader, the Great Miramichi Leader Raft Race was entered by a group from Millerton in the Southwest Clipper, captained by Glenn Garish. And I will note, I'm reading all these captions, and are they ever plugging themselves here? The Great Miramichi Leader Raft Race. I've wrote, read it ten times already. That's a beautiful raft right there. The, again, you're getting together with a group of people. You're, there's an exciting thing coming. People are getting together in their backyards or whatever and creatively working together to uh, not only build it, but then get on the water and, and experience it. So, you know, just to do something like that is healthy. So McDonald's Northern Nurtures. Okay. Very indicated at the front of the boat. Okay. Uh, the raft, uh, this one is from McDonald's. There's the Golden Arches right there. Canadian flag. And there's old Ronnie McDonnie himself. Okay, McDonald's Golden Arches was chosen best commercial raft in the Great Miramichi Leader Raft Race. I wonder if they had chicken uh, McNuggets in 1983. When did those come around? Oh, I think Paul Dawson was supposed to be on this one here. Okay, we just mentioned our local commerce minister, yeah. minister of commerce. The best commercial float by the SS Plytanic. And uh, there's the boys on that raft. Wouldn't it be beautiful, Raj, to be able to track down a... a like some documented photos of this in color. Yeah. Wouldn't that now, be beautiful? Now these are, these are, both of these pictures both have awards. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll show the first picture. Look at this raft right here. And the spirit of the Miramichi Award donated by Northwood Pulp and Timber went to 254 wing Barrettes. It had the best display, Miramichi spirit, and follow all safety rules. So that would have been um, uh, members from, we used to have a, an Air Force base here. My dad used to work there. My grandfather worked there. And many of my friends' fathers and mothers and whatever. But that came from there. Okay, so here's another, here's the bottom photo. Oh, that cool raft right there, folks. Look at our beautiful river. Um... Judged best industrial entry in the great Miramichi leader raft race was the SS Fearless of Northwood Pulp and Timber. And when I'm looking at this closely, just the boys are, it, it's, it, they built a little shack on top of it. What a, what a cool event. This is, this is great. This is, what a great idea, Raj. I had no idea what we were doing today. I come over here and Raj had this in his head. So this is uh, the winners. Okay. And uh, John McKendrick. Okay. Had a swim. Okay. <laughs> so the winner. Okay, so the winners were right there. But you know what? They looked like they went sleek. They had four guys on it. They just built a small little weapon. And it was called the Bertie Bogue Express. And then 
in order to win the race, I, you said a, one of the members had to jump out, swim to a bell, and ring it. Yeah. So there's the bell being rung by Johnny McKendrick. Oh, McKendrick, yeah. Johnny McKendrick. I heard that name. Uh, that's Amanda's friend, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So Amanda has a, a Amanda's yeah. Roger's daughter. Her friend was Johnny's Johnny's daughter. What was her name? Uh, she plays music. Pam. Oh, oh yes. Pam. Yeah. She plays music, and that's her dad ringing the bell. So Pam, if you're watching, if you're a fan of uh, Mara Hister Machi. Uh, and you have any photos in color of your father doing that, then Roger Como wants to see okay, them. Okay, so <clears throat> the captain is Billy Hay. Okay, Captain Billy Hay, a local um, a local referee. I, did he do baseball too? Uh, Mostly know. hockey. No, he was a, he, he refed a lot of hockey around the river. And Wally Jimmo. Wally Jimmo was on the winning raft right there. My finger points on his head. Wally yeah. Jimmo, my mother thinks he is, he was one of the Scott, greatest men. Scott Hickey. Scott Hickey was sitting over here. He was on the winning race. Scott Hickey, I know his son and daughters. And uh, one of Scott's daughters has a local business in the Mary Machine. She does aesthetics. She, ha she does, uh, she has a hairdresser and it's like kind of a salon type of place. And she's a great person, Tina. Married to Chris Walsh, and who's this guy? That's, that's Johnny. That's Johnny McKendrick. McKendrick, and there's Johnny McKendrick right there, the guy that rang the bell. And oh. um, Raj, that right there was uh, exceptional. What a what a great idea. Well, and we have, uh, we're we have already 1984 will be our next episode. Well, we did 84... Well, the newspaper, but the, the now the race of 84 after the Oh, we have another RAF race coming up, perhaps. Yeah. And, okay. And 85. And 85. Wow, okay. We, 85, we may tack on to 84, depending, we don't have as many pictures. Right, we don't have as many pictures. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go, folks, and um, you never know what uh, direction this is going to take. Raj opens up a box, one of his crates. Uh, wh why don't you go grab one of your um, your things again, and we'll, we'll show that one more time before we uh, sign off. Uh, you mean the box? Please, yeah, one of your... Uh, So if you're not watching before, my Uncle Raj has documented decades of newspaper clippings to, to tell a local history, and he has them stored in a cabinet tree. And okay, so as an example, 83 and 84 rafts is on the label, bottom, empty, okay, so, you know, so he, la he labels them there, okay? Now these are made out of metal, okay? This is just flashing, this one here, and then he was able to measure out, and again, as he mentioned before, a full newspaper, fold, like, you know, the way you get a newspaper, fits into these boxes, of course, Roger is part designer, part uh, engineer, part builder, part historian, and the Ooh. biggest puck hog, the biggest puck hog that <laughs> New Brunswick has ever seen. <laughs> But not on roller skates. But not on roller skates. We'll get to the roller skates. Uh, but so these are all documented, all labeled, and we're opening up a box. And, you know, it's kind of really cool for myself to go back and look at a history. And Roger's been doing this for decades. So there you go. Uh, we'll talk to you guys. Hmm? Oh, and we'll talk to you guys uh, very shortly. Take it easy.